Hey everybody, it's Caleb here. Today we're going to talk about the Z-axis that I've been working on for quite a while. We're going to go over the assembly process and we're also going to check out just how fast we can get it to move without skipping any steps. So let's get going. First off, here's an exploded view of all the components that make up this build. Please don't take the parts list as gospel because I probably didn't remember everything. It does, however, give you a general idea of what went into making this thing. Speaking of everything that went into the build, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that the top motor and bearing plate was made using a Creative Commons design from Edward Ford. I won't spend too much time showing off the milling process for the end plates since this is going to be a fairly long video anyways, but here's some proof that I actually did mill them on my Shape Oko. Alright, with that out of the way, let's start assembling this beast. So for anybody that's assembled a Shape Oko 2 or an X-Carve, you probably know that putting the Z-axis onto the machine is kind of a pain. In the course of designing this Z-axis, I got the idea to use some 8th inch spacers sandwiched between M5 screws and T-slot nuts to make up a couple of poor man's dowel pins. If it all works, then getting the Z-axis square on the X-carriage should be a breeze. Getting it all set up should be a simple process of finding the general height of the X-carriage and setting one of the spacers to that height. Then use a machinist square to line up the other spacer with the first one. Be careful when you tighten down the spacer because that has a tendency to shift a bit. Always the skeptic of my own ideas, I had to try it out before moving on. I'm kind of curious if anybody else has ever tried to do this on their build, because it sure looks like it's going to work out well for me. Getting back to the assembly process, the next thing I did was to attach the top bearing slash motor mount plate to the maker slide. You can probably tell that I added the flange bearing to the plate at this time too. Probably a good time right now to apologize for all the times that my hands and arms are going to get into the way of the shot. One of my favorite sayings is fail faster, you know. And of course that doesn't come without making a couple mistakes. The next thing to do is to add the lead screw, upper lock, collar, and pulley to the assembly. You can also see that I used an 8mm washer between the pulley and the bearing. I kind of think you could get away with not using it. It's just that my original plan called for it, so I used it. I abbreviated the assembly process for the Z-axis carriage simply because I figured most people have assembled V-wheels before. And after I got the spindle mount brackets squared up on the carriage, I really didn't want to take them off. A fun fact for those that have been watching my videos for a little while, you might recognize that brass shim as the one I was trying to mill on my vacuum table. Now it's time to get the carriage onto the maker slide. You need to be a little careful lining up and starting the lead screw on the Delrin nut. You might have noticed that I leave the carriage close to the end to keep the lead screw centered on the right place. That should ensure that the bottom bearing plate goes on easy. Once the bottom bearing plate is on, I had to loosen up the top pulley and lock collar so that I could adjust the lead screw. This is a really good time to deal with fine adjustment and making sure everything lines up and doesn't bind at any point. After I got everything lined up to my liking, I took off the set screws on the lock collars and added some medium strength thread locker to them. Once I was all done with that, I tightened down the bottom bearing plate to make sure that the lead screw was firmly captured between the two bearings. Before we go any further, I'd like to talk about the clearance between the Z carriage plate, maker slide, and lock collars. You might have noticed that the maker slide has some notches milled out at both ends. You can also see in this clip that the Z carriage plate has some spots milled out at both ends as well. Both of these modifications were made to give clearance to the lock collar at either end. There's a lot of ways to get around this problem potentially, but I was attempting to keep the Z carriage as close to the maker slide as possible. Alright, we're finally ready to put the Z-axis on the machine. To make this process way less painful, I'm going to remove the lower bearing plate so that it can slide onto the T-slot nuts. Now it's just a matter of sliding the Z-axis onto the X-carriage. Just look at that. It's a thing of beauty and a joy forever. That dowel pin idea is definitely my favorite mod I've ever come up with. I mean, it's so cool to be able to just slide the Z-axis back and forth to center it, and not even have to worry about it being square with the X-carriage. You know, on second thought, I might be the only person that thinks that's actually cool. Oh well. And of course, now we've got to reattach the lower bearing plate. I'm not going to lie, mounting the motors was one of the more challenging parts in this process. One of the most important tips I can recommend to anybody is to put the belt on before all the screws are on. Honestly, it didn't take too much to mount the motor, although it would have been easier if I wasn't trying to video the process. Also, I highly recommend picking up a pair of these really tiny channel locks if you don't have a pair already. There was a second here where I thought I was going to have to take the motor off and start over again. Fortunately, I was able to force the pulley on without too much trouble. 
One of the many snafus that I ran into was the fact that my SuperPID sensor wire had the unfortunate tendency of trying to occupy the same space as the lower bearing plate. I solved this problem by drilling even more holes into my DW660 and running a zip tie through the holes to hold the wire closer to the spindle. We'll get to see a close up on how the solution worked in just a bit. I tend to think that this will be a fairly workable solution, but if anybody has a better suggestion, I'm all ears. And now for the ease and joy of slipping the spindle into these sweet mounting brackets. I do need to get slightly longer screws for the bottom bracket though, but shoulda woulda coulda. Of course the next step is to figure out how to anodize aluminum, but I suppose that'll have to come later. Now we can finally look at how good of a job that zip tie is doing at keeping the super pid sensor wire from disaster. I think it looks like it's gonna do okay. Yep, looks like it's okay. So I got that going for me. Which is nice. Finally, for the moment of truth, if I'm to believe the access test right now, then the Z axis is traveling at 110 millimeters a second right now. But then again, I simply don't believe that because I haven't had an opportunity to double check those numbers yet. Nevertheless, to put it technically, it's fast. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Now obviously this isn't done. I've still got a couple things like uh, limit switches and cameras to figure out brackets for on the new Z axis. And I also want to make a new crank for this uh, little drive shaft area because when it's powered down, it's a pain in the butt to try to, you know, jog it up and down by hand here. Uh, when it's powered up, it's not really that big of a deal, but powered down it is. So anyways, that's what we have to show today. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like the video or comment or share the video. You know, all that's appreciated and have a good day. Bye.